Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a voiced recording to make uh, this uh, tracer animation of a moving character. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and this is a very simple setup. I have a human model which is rigged by Mixamal, Adobe Mixamal. So you have uh, this kind of a dancing animation and uh, we basically just uh, trace some of the vertices. Okay. And uh, as always, I'm going to use the preset, which you can download for free from the link in the description. Uh, in fact, I talked about this uh, tracer last time. So yeah, basically that's it. The reason I created an additional plane instead of making modifier on the top of this original man is simply because uh, old modifier system may not be compatible with geometry nodes. And I don't even know if this armature will actually deform geometry nodes or not. So I don't want to take a risk of anything. So let's just forget about that. Create an additional plane and add a geometry node tree. So now we are going to paint some vertex of this human man model. So firstly, let's just uh, go to a vertex group. And I'm going to add a vertex group just to select some of the vertex. Maybe this arm, maybe this arm, maybe this leg, something like that. Uh, you may want to get it symmetric, but since this is just a very simple tutorial, so I'm not going to do that very correct. Uh, let's just assign this vertex. Okay, so this vertex will be selected and now we import this object uh, into our geometry node tree and you realize the origin and the relative will make a very huge difference. And now we separate uh, geometry. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to only take some of the vertex based on the vertex group we assigned previously. So we take a name, the attribute, and it's called a group. So we just uh, use that. And technically speaking, uh, because the vertex group contains weight painting, so it will be a float, uh, it does not really matter. We can just plug that into the selection. Uh, it may not be very obvious, so let's just hide everything into, yes. So now we only see this whatever stuff. And we basically just trace them. And you see, this is whatever we are getting. And it's a very dense curve. So potentially we want to point instance, but it may deal something with dynamic sampling, which I do not want. Um, so I, I would say let's Currently, just to stay with it, and then we can trim it. So finally, we get some like this. Uh, it may not be very obvious what we are actually doing. So let's try to join geometry. We join this original mesh, and we bevel curve to give it some thickness. And I'm going to turn value position. To decreased thickness and you realize because we have a lot of vertices so sometimes it becomes a very dense amount of curves so I think uh, we can do by additional four so I'm going to reduce some amounts by random value take a boolean so we delete half of the points, uh, which is not enough. So we only get 10% of all points selected. So now not only my viewport is becoming very much faster, but we can also get more kind of ID about what's actually going on. We can take a value precision. So currently this is one divided by 10. So we can take uh, one divided by 100. So it becomes one over 100 probability. 
So we get something like this, and uh, I think it's a little bit too low. You can change the seed. Mm, probably whatever. Mm, I think this is kind of acceptable as long as you get something done. And the rest is just to give it material. So we add a material. We take a set material. Just to give a kind of a emission shader. And if we go to material preview mode, let's give our human mammal a black shader. And we probably turn on bloom and make this emission maybe strong. So something like that. And the rest is just to play around different seeds, different probabilities. Maybe we can bump that to four times. Yeah. So finally we get something like this and the rest is to play around all these kind of settings, which is which is kind of simple. And of course you can smooth. Uh, you can smooth position for your curves. So that it does not have to be too jaggy. As you can see, that, uh, because sometimes the movement is too fast. Uh, and you can also resample curve. So you smooth out the kind of sharp edges when you are flowing around. So here I'm back because you may want to ask how I generated the particles after I finish the, the actual animation. So let's discuss this a little bit. So now if we only view this separate geometry, we do see nothing in the viewport because we're separating points. Uh, for some reason, this point has no volume. So here, let's just uh, duplicate that. And I'm going to separate the face so that I can see some of the face or polygons. Okay. Uh, the reason I need a face is because I need to point the distribute on face. And uh, to precisely control the amount of points I gem I'm generating, so I'm just going to use the preset. So about five points is being generated. And then I'm going to take a simulation zone. So I output this point to the simulation zone and I join the particles I generated earlier. So this is the kind of concept. And now if I simulation output, then you can see it's actually also a kind of trace. Okay, but the difference is that these are particles without connection and we are making them to fly. Uh, the way I'm going to do is to take a set of position and take a noise CD and plug that into the offset. So now we can see these particles are flying away, but uh, you can see some, some kind of trace behavior still. Uh, the reason is actually because we are using the same noise for every particles and even their seed is the same. Okay. Uh, it's just a kind of a coincidence for these particles to fly into different places uh, because they start off a different position when they are born. So we need a kind of ID of these particles. It might be easier if we use presets. So we set a particle parameter. So this is a new preset for this kind of purpose. Um, then you just plug this ID into the seed. Then they are having different seed. But this preset is still under development and it looks kind of very ugly. I have to admit. So uh, to really replace these presets, if you want. Then you just uh, store named attributes. We take a same time frame. And uh, in addition to frame, we need to add an index because there are five childs being born at the same time. 
So you want to distinguish who is the biggest brother, who is the little sister. Uh, and then you just take an attribute t. This is the birth date of our particles. And we also need a, oh no, actually this is the ID. I need to also record the birth state of my particles. And then I need to record, uh, I think this is fine. So I'm going to take a named attribute ID. To the seed. So we generate basically the same thing as what we've done previously. Okay. Uh, sometimes you may encounter a kind of problem. Uh, no, it should be fine. Anyway, so now this is fine, but the, previously I recorded the birth dates of these particles as well because I want to kill these particles after a certain amount of time. So now I'm going to instance icosphere radius down. Okay. So I'm generating these kind of particles and they will always be here, no matter what. But uh, I need to kill them when they are too old. So I take a new named attribute and I take same time. So current year subtract their birth date means the age of particles. And by using this age, you can construct a fourth. And we are going to float curve and remap zero to one. Because you actually grow older and older which is giving a value from 0 to 1. So now it looks like uh, you start from small particles and then you grow larger. We want to reverse it. And the reason I'm doing this process is because I want to control the scale. And this float curve only works in the range of 0 to 1. So you have to do remap afterwards. And the reason it becomes so important for this float curve is because I want these particles to stay large longer. Okay. So you can play around with these kind of settings. Maybe 35. So finally, uh, we just uh, join all these kind of geometry together. Okay. This is just an kind of example. You can do more things as you wish. But basically, that's it. So I hope uh, you enjoy this uh, tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.